Do you have a child who is addicted to gaming, specifically to video gaming, who at times seems to live inside a video game? Do you speak to him or her, but there's no evidence at all that they heard you? Are they neglecting their chores, homework, and other members of the family? When you call them for dinner or bed, is it like they're deaf or dead? Is it like they live in another world, inside a screen or a box? Recent studies have shown that limitation of screen time was the single most important variable affecting brain function in children. And they were studying things like sleep, nutrition, exercise, and they found that limitation of screen time was the single most important factor. Are you tired of having your child essentially kidnapped by a screen? I'm here to tell you that there is a solution. And we're not talking about controlling or minimizing this addiction. That's just not enough. We're talking about eliminating it. Welcome to the answers you've been hoping for. For a long time now, you've been looking for ways to help your child, and I greatly admire what you're doing right now. You're looking for answers. You're trying to love your child better, which is way better than most parents do. And finally, you're in the right place. It's like you've been paddling around in the middle of the ocean, desperately looking for help, and now, almost unbelievably, it's here. This is the ship you've been looking for. Now, how could I possibly make such a bold, extravagant promise? Because I know how to teach parents how to help their children deal with the life-altering distractions of video games, which are everywhere. What I teach has been used by uncounted thousands of parents, and it works consistently. I'm not trying to sell you something here that we're going to be doing. You don't have to wait. We're going to do it right now. The training begins right now. In the next few seconds, in fact, I'll be teaching you things about your children and yourselves that you've never known. What a relief to know that right now you're exactly where you've wanted to be. You can learn what you need to learn. Finally, you can feel encouraged. You can feel hope. You can help your child, and I'm going to help you do that. You wouldn't be here unless two things were true. One, you have a child who is way too occupied with playing video games, like way too occupied. And two, you care enough to do something about it. I know you've tried to change things, maybe restricting and limiting and setting time limits and counseling and nagging and using things that you read in books and programs and yelling and controlling, but your child still buries their face in a screen. They talk about powers and levels and points and coins, but they can't participate in a normal conversation. And you are frustrated and tired. You've been looking for something that works, and here it is. Principles that have proven to work hundreds of thousands of times all over the world. If parents are thoroughly committed to learning and practicing what I'm going to share with you, predictably, I see children quit their game addiction. It just goes away. And instead, they become happy and responsible and occupied with living even after everything else has failed, you become pretty happy too. It is not hopeless. I'm here to help you, and I'll be using the insight and experience of counseling with thousands of parents, and from writing 20 books and endless articles on the subject, as well as appearing on 1,600 radio and television shows and presenting seminars all around the world, and more. You are about to change the world around you, and you don't have to do it alone, which is miserable and frustrating. You've already proven that yourself with your own experience. So now the question that has to be on your mind, what am I going to teach you that you don't already know? 
What am I going to say that you haven't already read or heard somewhere else? This is going to be revolutionary for you to hear. So slow down your brain and listen with your soul. What does a child need more than anything else? This is a question we don't ask nearly often enough. After food, water, and air, the answer is very obvious, and yet we keep missing it over and over. To see the answer more easily, more clearly, let's start with an infant. When an infant cries, other than from obvious physical pain, what does he want? You already know intuitively because you just pick him up. You're pretty smart. You already know that every child wants to feel cared for. Every child wants to feel loved. Picking them up and holding them is just a demonstration of that. And if you're genuine in caring about them, they feel it. But infants are relatively easy to love. They smile and melt your heart and make cute little noises, and they laugh in ways we never hear anywhere else. They're adorable. But then they get older, and they learn to spill things and make messes and ferociously say no when you tell them what to do and scream in their car seats and fight with their siblings and become disrespectful and refuse to listen to you and say ugly and hateful things to you and other people and disappear into the video games. They get a lot harder to love. And when that happens, we really don't know what to do. Usually we try to control their behavior and we might even temporarily succeed, but it doesn't last. And we end up with addicted and unhappy kids. We're not so happy either. Let me say this another way. If our children become more difficult to love, as their behavior changes, that proves we don't know how to love them unconditionally. If we did love them unconditionally, we'd love them no matter what. But if loving them becomes more difficult when they're ignoring us and everything else in favor of a screen, for example, our love is conditional. Unconditional love, or what I call real love, the real thing, means caring about another person without wanting anything from them in return. Oh, but we do expect something in return for the love that we give our kids. Respect, cooperation, gratitude, and reasonable behavior, which would include way less time playing video games. Sometimes no time playing video games. Now, more about unconditional love. That kind of love would mean that our love would not be affected by what they do. That's what unconditional love means. But we really don't know how to do that. How do I know? We prove it every time we become angry or disappointed or impatient or irritated at them. Our anger and disappointment and frustration are undeniable proof that our love is not unconditional. Deep inside, you can feel that what I'm saying is true, but let me demonstrate further. When other people are angry at you, do you like it? Pfft, no, you don't. Not ever. Nobody does. When other people are angry at us, or when we're angry at other people, we're all saying, Look at what you did to me or failed to do for me. When we're angry, we're focused on ourselves. Me, me, me. And in that moment, other people, notably our children, hear only four words. I don't love you. When we're angry, we're far too occupied with ourselves to unconditionally love anybody. I repeat, when we are angry at another person, including our child, they hear only, I don't love you. I promise you that this is true. And no, we don't mean to say that, but what else could people hear while our words 
tone and behavior are screaming, me, me, me. I don't love you is what you hear and feel when people are angry at you. Think about that, honestly, for a moment. And it's what our children hear and feel when we're angry at them. Again, we do not mean to do this. We do not mean to hurt our children. That's ridiculous. But it was inevitable because we were not loved unconditionally, which means being consistently loved without disappointment or anger, loved freely with no conditions. So how could we possibly have learned how to unconditionally love our own children? Impossible. And nobody is to blame. Our ignorance of real love has simply perpetuated over generations. We don't know how to love unconditionally because we've never seen it or felt it with any consistency. For emphasis, I'm going to say all this in a slightly different way. When children behave badly, when they are addicted to video games, for example, it is always a reaction to them not feeling loved unconditionally, loved with no disappointment, irritation, frustration, or anger. Your child uses video games to escape the pain of the world, period. What are you willing to do about that? This could sound discouraging, even bleak. Overall, it is kind of bleak. Look at the world, at the utter obsession with things that are distractions from our pain, from our not feeling loved, like endless entertainment, like video games, addiction to electronics, anger, controlling people, drugs, alcohol, sex, and on and on. There is the proof that overall, we do not know how to love people unconditionally. If we did, and I speak here with vast experience, these behaviors I just listed would not exist. I've been teaching unconditional love now for so many years to so many parents that I can tell you this with complete certainty. When a child truly feels loved unconditionally, he or she does not become addicted to games. Instead, they're happy and responsible and possess all those other qualities you wish they had. With sufficient love, there is simply no need to turn to games or other unproductive behaviors. Happy people don't behave badly, like being addicted to games, for example. Period. Full stop. So that is what I'll be teaching you. How to love your children unconditionally, which then gives them a reason to listen to you. How many times have you thought in your head, what is wrong with this kid? Why does this kid never listen to me? Well, there's an answer, and here it is. Because when you're irritated, your child hears only, I don't love you. And that is so devastating that he or she hears none of the rest of the content of what you say. If you love them unconditionally, they can hear you, what you're really saying, because they're not distracted by their fear. They're not blinded and deafened by the I don't love you message. Then it becomes possible for you to teach them anything, like how to be loving and responsible themselves, how to use their time wisely. And if they have that powerful trifecta, if they feel loved and they are loving and responsible, they are guaranteed to be happy, which is the ultimate goal for any parent or, frankly, any person. Your children can learn that being happy is way better than the substitutes of games, shooting aliens, and winning points. Uh, they prefer real life. Take my hand and we'll talk about what you can do and how I will support you. It will almost be like starting over as a parent. You're going to learn how to be a real parent and your child will learn the lessons of life that will benefit him or her for the rest of their lives. If you implement what you learn here and if you do it consistently, 
You simply will not believe the differences you'll see in your child and in you and in your family. Imagine it. No more distractions from games. None. No more inattention. No more whining when you say it's time to finish a game. No more tension in the family. Oh, it's astonishing to see and to feel. Our children are not defective. They're not bad. We're not bad. We just have not known how to love and teach them. What we're doing with our kids now is not working. Loving and teaching them does. Rarely is it too late to change whatever unproductive behaviors you're dealing with. Not if you're really willing to learn and to apply these principles to the interactions with your child. I promise you, learning to be a parent is worth it. We're about to learn how to eliminate the behaviors in your children that are hurting them and making you crazy. Really. I make you another promise. Learning to be a loving, effective parent is easier than everything else you've done as a parent to this point. We're really going to get into this. This is not a casual effort. We're not looking to make your child more manageable. They're not objects. That's not even close to being enough. Our mission is to help you become a powerful and effective parent and to help your child feel loved and to be loving, responsible, and then unavoidably genuinely happy. It's a transformation. If you are truly committed to learning how to parent, I'm fully committed to teach you and I will bring resources to the table you never thought about. The rewards are spectacular, as we have seen in uncounted thousands of families. There is not a single thing you will ever do that will ring through the ages more powerfully than being a loving and effective parent. You can do this. So let's learn some more. Let's get started. Click the button below. It's free to begin transforming your life as a ridiculously effective parent.